Hello, uh, this is Narain three phase water level controller model WLC MD21, which is suitable for all varieties of three phase pumps. So, this gets attached to the existing starter of yours, and as the name suggests, water level controller is uh, basically an automation device which will automatically switch on and switch off your motor based on the levels of water. So when it comes to three phase pumps, there are a uh, few different configurations that uh, uh, people use. The first configuration would be straight three phase monoblock or submersible pump to lift the water from sump to overhead tanks. Usually this combination is followed in majority of the apartments and that is where uh, the sump to overhead tank, both of those come into picture. So pretty straightforward, it's in this water level controller when fitted to that kind of a configuration senses both the levels of overhead tank and as well as the underground tank or sump which we call so based on the water levels in the overhead tank and the sump the motor will be automatically turned on and turned off so like uh, for example when the water in the overhead tank drops below uh, 50 percent mark checks for the availability of water in the sump if the water is present in the sump the motor switches on through the controller and while the you know tank fills up the motor is turned off this also has uh, a dry run sensor so uh, to be precise here, it has four levels of demarcation for the overhead tank indication. It has three levels of demarcation for the sump indication. So that is minimum, medium and maximum. And uh, for the overhead tank, it is 25%, 50%, 75% and 100%. So apart from this, it has the flow indication. Likewise, when uh, uh, we provide a dry run sensor, which sits on the uh, pipe. So while the uh, water is flowing on the dry run sensor, this means the actual uh, water is getting pumped. So it, this controller takes uh, the feedback from that particular sensor and it starts blowing the flow sensors. And then uh, if the water doesn't fall on the dry run sensor even after a while, then uh, you know it turns off the motor and uh, it pops out an error as dry run error. Similarly, it has a semi-automatic operation as well. Like uh, for example, if you have uh, the water at around 50% mark or maybe half full in the tank and you decide to fill it up, you can always make use of this button here. This is like a semi-automatic operation. Pressing this will manually turn on the motor. When the tank fills up, the motor is automatically switched off. So this is the uh, combination which is used for uh, sump to overhead tank. And the second configuration which people use is for uh, the bore well pumps. So they can either uh, pump from bore well to the underground tank or sump, or the third combination would be pumping from bore well to the overhead tank directly. So for all these three configurations, it's the common water level controller that you'll be using. So when you are using it from borewell to sump or borewell to tank, what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to, you know, bypass all the uh, sump sensors. So we will we'll go into detail in a short while. So before that, we will quickly jump into uh, the connections first. So if you can just have a look at the device at the bottom. So there would be a cap on top of this, but this is just for demonstration purpose that we have removed the cap. So here you will see these connectors. So the white color connectors are for the control wiring and the green color connectors are for the water level sensors. So when it comes to the control wiring, so uh, I would like to mention here, so for the demonstration purpose, we are making use of Narain uh, control starter, analog control starter model DOLRG. So for this, we will be explaining you the connections. So the first two connectors from the left hand side would be the 440 volts auxiliary supply. So if you can just have a look at your starter, so this is how your starter looks, right? So this is how your starter looks. So the starter would always get its input from uh, at one of the input terminals. So what you need to do is you'll have to tap a wire from any uh, two of these points among the three, any two points among these and feed it as an input to connectors one and two. So we've taken the wires from R and B, basically one and three from the starter. So this is the auxiliary supply for the water level controller. Then uh, you have uh, connectors 3 and 4 which are supposed to be connected in series with the stop push button. So when you, uh, if you can just have a look at the starters of push button or the stop push button which is usually red in color. So right behind the stop push button you would be uh, seeing the connectors here. Okay. So uh, yeah, so for example if you can just have a look there would be uh, terminals here and the wires would al already be in there. So what you need to do here is, so this was the wire, the blue color wire which you can see here. This was the wire which was connected here. So what you need to do the first in the first part of the connection is, you will have to take out the wire which is connected. So this blue wire was connected here. So I am removing the blue wire. So and I am joining the removed wire 
to connector number three. So I have made use of a white color wire to join. So I've removed the blue wire which was connected here and I'm joining it with a white color wire. And if you can just see here, that's the same white color wire which is going to connector number three. Then we'll have to take another wire which is gray in color the, from connector number four. So I've taken a gray color wire for your reference. So another wire from connector number four which goes back to the same point where you had removed the wire previously okay i'll repeat again so you are supposed to remove the wire which is going to one of the points and connect the removed wire to connector number three take a new wire from connector number four and connect it back to the remote point so this is what we call a series connection so once you do this uh, the series connection connectors number three and four is done then you're left with the, the parallel connection for the on push button which is for connection connectors five and six so for uh, the parallel connection is pretty straightforward. What you need to do is you need to take two wires from connectors five and six. We have taken green and black wire. So if you can just see the green button or the start push button or the on button. So behind that again, there'll be two wires, sorry, two connectors for which the wires are already there. So you're supposed to connect the wires coming out of from connectors five and six on each of the connectors. So it doesn't matter about the polarity. You can connect it either ways. So one wire should go to the uh, one of the connector and the second wire from connector number six to the other connector. So that is the parallel connection for the start push button. So we have completed the uh, control uh, wiring part. Next, we will move into the sensor connections. So along with the product, you will get one of the packet like this, wherein you will have all the sensors placed inside. So it will be clearly mentioned on the pack package as to you know which colored sensors are for overhead tank and which colored sensors are for some. Some can also be treated as underground tank. Okay. So likewise in, in the package you will be having bullet sensors and the dry run sensor. Sensor of this type is called as bullet sensor and the sensor of this type is called as dry run sensor. Okay. First we will finish off the bullet sensor uh, connections. So if you are using it for uh, the sump to overhead tank combination, you are supposed to put in all the sensors here. So the very first sensor is the common. So the first sensor should be dropped to the bottommost point in the underground tank or sump, the bottommost point or the floor of the sump. And the wire coming out of it should be connected to common, sump common, okay? The first one. So next you will have to place uh, the, sen the second sensor slightly above, maybe at around 20% uh, mark or maybe just above the submersible motor if you have and that wire should be going to sump low okay then you'll have to place the third sensor slightly above that maybe at around 30 percent mark and connect that to sump medium then the last sensor which can be placed at around 50 percent mark in the sump and that will go to the wire coming out of that will go to some high so there will be four sensors again the first one is the bottommost point common sump low sump medium and sump high so the sump high should be at around 50 percent mark in the sump this is about the sump connections then we will move on to the tank sensors so tank sensors the first again the first connector should be placed the first sensor should be placed at the bottommost point in the overhead tank and the wire coming out of it should go to common again so there's a common point here then so this we can treat it as tank common then you have the next sensor which can be placed at around 25 percent mark the wire coming out of that will go to tank low so this tank low sensor should be placed in such a manner that whenever water drops below this tank low sensor point that is when the motor switches off then you can place the next sensor slightly above at around maybe 70 percent mark and you can connect the wire coming out of it into sump medium then the last sensor can be placed at the topmost point at, at which you know you want the motor to turn off you can place that sensor there and the wire coming out of that should be connected to tank high then uh, you will have another type of sensor which is called as dry run sensor sensor which looks something like this okay it will be a plastic sensor with two wires coming out of it so and it will also have two screws like this okay so this is a sensor which is supposed to be placed on the inlet of your uh, inlet pipe of your sump or tank wherever you are placing this so this is basically a uh, this is used to sense the flow of water and you know this acts as a protective mechanism also just in case the water doesn't fall inside the uh, tank so that is when the motor switches off so this sensor should let us assume my finger is a pipe and this sensor should sit on the pipe like this okay this is a flexible material so you can just bend it across the pipe and just tie it using a wire or some other cable tie so that this sits intact 
then the water which is coming out of the pipe should fall on these two screws and then enter the tank so if it sits on the pipe like this make sure the water coming out of the pipe should fall on these two or should touch these two screws basically and then enter the tank okay so the two wires which are coming out of that any one wire can be connected to common common can be either uh, this one the first common or the common which is connected to the bottommost point in the tank one of the wire goes to common and the second wire goes to dry run so dry run is usually the last connector here which says dry run so that is where it is and this is again for the flow indication feedback okay i uh, i hope the sensor connections are clear again for the tank the first uh, uh, sen the first sensor would be the common then we have tank low tank medium tank high and the dry run sensor so if at all you are using this uh, water level controller for the bore well to sump or bore well to tank combination then you need to short you need not place any wires in the uh, the, the first part what you can do is you can short from common to sump low sump low to sump medium sump medium to sump high you can short all these terminals you can by shorting i mean you are interconnecting all these connectors saying that uh, the controller by doing this interconnection we are just uh, letting the controller know that this combination is used for the bore well uh, configuration okay. so this is about it uh, for the sensors so we will quickly move on to the uh, operational part so on the left hand side you will see these two switches first is the auto and manual mode selection this is the power on switch so this is the off manual and auto mode so i'll i'll first put it into manual just to show you the demonstration so i put it in i uh, put it into manual mode so meaning you are operating the starter in a manual configuration so if the water level controller is put in manual mode even though the lights show up Uh, the motor will not switch on automatically from the water level control you can still make use of the buttons on your starter and switch on this uh, and switch off the pump as usual you were doing all these things okay so when when you want the water, water level controller to come into picture or op become operational you can switch this into the auto mode so the moment you switch it into auto mode that is when the auto automatic operation kicks in so now since the water is present in both sump and tank the motor is not turned on we will slide uh, we will uh, you know start decreasing the levels of water in the overhead tank you can see the water, water level decreasing when the water drops below 50% mark you know that is when the motor starts you can see the motor turning on through the water level controller and once the water pumps in and hits the dry run sensor that is when you can you know, see these flow indications coming so till the water comes and fa falls on the dry run sensor you will not see this flow indicators coming in okay so so once the water starts filling in the uh, tank you can see the water level slowly increasing in the over a tank when the water level reaches the brim or the tank high sensor that is when the motor automatically turns off okay. you can see the motor turning off now because the tank is full so as soon as the motor switches off the flow indicators goes away so then again uh, let us uh, have a look at another combination wherein the sump gets empty while the motor is on so the tank is getting empty initially so the motor switches on through the water level controller so let us see this combination wherein you know the water is going up and in the meanwhile the water in the sump gets empty so let us see that condition here as well the water in the sump is getting empty so in this case the motor is turned off when the water in the sump gets completely nil the water in the sump is empty now the controller makes sure the motor turns off So you'll have this safety as well, and uh, the last mode would be, let us say, uh, you know, your sump has water, then your tank has water at around 75% mark, and you decide to fill up the overhead tank. So, you, for example, let us uh, create a scenario wherein uh, you would get to know that there won't be any power for the next couple of hours, and you decide to fill up the overhead tank. In that case, you can always make use of this need button in order to, uh, you know, fill up the tank manually. so you can press this button pressing this button will manually turn on the motor so once the motor switches on you know the water starts flowing in and when the tank fills up the controller automatically shuts off so you can treat this mode as the semi automatic operation so you can see the tank filling up and auto shut off by the uh, the controller okay so this is about it uh, this is pretty much about the uh, water level controller model WLC MD21 for three phase pumps i hope this video was clear if you have any queries you can always reach us out on 
डबल नाइन सेवन डबल टू फोर थ्री डबल सेवन फोर आई रिपीट आर कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर इज डबल नाइन सेवन डबल टू फोर थ्री डबल सेवन फोर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू एड हियर क्विकली दैट देर आर टू मोर एल ईडीज विच आई फॉर्गॉट टू मैंशन दीज टू आर दि एरर इंडिकेशन एल ईडीज द फर्स्ट वन इज दि पवर ऑन इंडिकेशन सो वेन एवर दि मोटर स्विच ऑफ ड्यू टू ड्राई रन एरर दैट इज वेन दि वॉटर डजेंट फॉल ऑन दि यू नो द सेंसर ड्राई रन सेंसर दैट इज वेन द ड्राई रन लाइट पॉप्स अप दिस मीन्स दैट दि मोटर हेज टर्न ऑफ बिकॉज ऑफ द कंट्रोलर the reason is the water didn't fall on the dry run sensor and uh, yeah this product is available on our website you can purchase this product on our website or else you can also give us a call on the mentioned number i'll repeat it again it's 9972243774 we can assist you with the process of buying the product uh, and installation you need not worry we can guide you over phone or as to how to you know connect these wires we have this video call support also uh, i hope the video was clear thank you so much for watching this video